Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. <coughs> in this video, we will cover the first step of the language processing system in Java, which is compilation, <coughs> before we actually tackle the other steps, since uh, we need to, to discuss an important output here for compilation before we discuss the other upcoming steps, and God willing. <coughs> But before we begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen, Sayyiduna Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi, wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen. Wa rada Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'een, Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. We begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter. <coughs> we thank Him for all of His blessings that He has bestowed upon us, for they are innumerable. And we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his fellow companions. Amen. <coughs> we also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and his family. Now, as we have mentioned before, in Java, the pre-processing step, step does not exist. It starts with compilation and we covered this in the first lecture or was it the second lecture I do not remember of this tutorial or this course but since we will be tackling all the steps uh, in depth for the architectural portion I wanted to reiterate upon what we have discussed so what is compilation briefly and simply it involves the conversion of what is written <coughs> on a text editor or using an IDE and that is known as the source code not the movie also known as human readable because it uses plain English for writing and then converting that to an <coughs> intermediary file known as byte code and then we will have an arrow here like so and the program responsible for this conversion or this translation is known as the java compiler which is java c Java compiler if you would like to learn more about compilers and interpreters I elucidate the differences between the two in a separate lecture under computational sciences the playlist is called computational sciences I do not discuss the details of each program but I discuss simply what is the difference between a compiler and an interpreter <coughs> this has the dot java extension and this one has the dot class file extension it is extremely important for you to understand this step because this will become exceedingly important later on for loading linking and not really initialization but we can include it this file is the most important file in the execution of a java program so you must understand this step before continuing any further if you are unaware of this file, the upcoming lectures will be difficult. 
I will discuss this in a separate lecture right after this one actually. But since the bytecode is a product of compilation, I wanted to discuss this first step. Now, <clears throat> this is during compilation, so this is compile time. What happens during the execution of the program, we discussed before. So we can write here runtime, runtime, or <coughs> execution of the program. So what happens is that this file, and uh, I will erase this because it is annoying me. There we go. This file is actually translated uh, using the interpreter this time. I'll push this downwards like so. Into let me write it here. Machine code you can also call it binary code so it is in the format of zeros and ones binary code zeros and ones because that is the language of the computer and this of course is done through <coughs> either the interpreter or the JIT, just-in-time, compiler. We will discuss these later on, do not worry. Because this is an extremely important step in Java, which covers loading, linking, and initialization. And these are part of that process. Now remember, this is the language of your own computer or your own CPU or your own processor or your own microprocessor and the language spoken by your processor would depend on its creator or vendor for example the processor or the controller or microcontroller to be more precise designed by IBM would speak about a machine code that is different from a processor designed by Motorola, for example, and so on and so forth. So this is extremely specific to your computer, which would depend on the processor, and that depends on the vendor or the manufacturer. So if my computer speaks Arabic, I cannot have the interpreter translate into English machine code. It has to translate to Arabic machine code, just as an example. Now, so what does this mean? It means that this step is dependent on your platform. The interpreter or the, uh, the just-in-time compiler will translate based on the language that your computer speaks. This is, pla is platform independent because the source code is the same and the byte code is the same. However, this will depend on your machine itself. Okay. <coughs> what else did I need to cover here before I end this lecture? So we wanted to cover this and to cover this. Ah, yes. In the... A general concepts lecture we discussed that in C uh, perhaps I can draw it here quickly in C or C++ I honestly do not know if it is the same process in um, C sharp or not mainly when I studied C sharp I studied the I did not study the architectural portion of it so I honestly do not know. I do not think so since C Sharp is basically Microsoft's answer to uh, Java. It is Microsoft's version of Java. 
That is why they designed it. <coughs> so we have the source code. Then here we have assembly language. And then here we have machine code. Machine code eddy. <laughs> I do not think people will understand the reference. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let me just uh, adjust this. Okay, and we mentioned that uh, the one responsible for this step was the compiler, and the one responsible for this step was the assembler. Now, as you can see, the assembler does not exist in Java. It is the interpreter or the JIT compiler that takes its place. So I just wanted to highlight that difference before we end the lecture. Lastly, I just want to <coughs> confirm that we will discuss this file, the dot class file, how we can read it. Well, we will not actually read it because it is in bytes or bits and bytes or binary. There is a way by which we can trans, uh, translate it to hexadecimal, but we are not interested in reading the hexadecimal digits. What I meant by reading it is disassembling the bytecode to see what it actually contains. That is the important part. I do not care about the hexadecimal digits of the bytecode. Perhaps we can add that lecture in the far future, bi'ithnillah and God willing, and discuss the magic number that any bytecode begins with. But it is not essential at the moment. What I would like for you is to understand the foundation and the architecture of Java even if it is at the beginner level, at least you are aware of what happens when you execute a program. So in the next lecture, be Allah and God willing, we will see the command that is needed to disassemble this and see what it contains and compare it to another file that is extremely important known as the constant pool. Once we discuss those two, then we can move on to the second step, which is loading. So we just wanted to cover the first step today, which was compilation. And as you can see, it was quite simple. No difficulties whatsoever. But just to remind you of how to compile, let us quickly execute an example. So problem with notepad is that it does not alert me to any mistakes so I will have to be extremely careful <laughs> with my indentations curly and scope and so on and so forth then here it will be public static void main put the scope no need for any returns Oh yeah, and I need to add the argument here, string array of data type, uh, sorry, uh, of uh, name args. And here we will type system dot out dot print line. <coughs> Step one is compilation. Then step Step two is loading, then step three is linking, then finally step four initialization. And we will end the line here like so. <coughs> Remember, everything must be in a class. Everything in Java must be in a class. So I will save this in the desktop as main. And remember, it must match 
the name of the class the name of the file must match the name of the class as opposed to C and C++ okay so now what I will need to do is <coughs> just open this file here and I will access the command prompt from here um, now if I type dir well, it is there somewhere, uh, main Java, there we go. <laughs> I am thinking of also recording a lecture for different commands regarding the command prompt, Allah and God willing. Java C, that is the name of the compiler. You know what, I will have it here. That is the name of the compiler, and it is also the name of the command. Java C, main dot Java, Remember, you need the file extension. And if I do not see any errors, that means it compiled correctly. But if I minimize, I will see that there is the class file here. And if I wish to execute it, we will cover this in the other lectures, bi'ithnillah and God willing. This is the application launcher command, Java main without so do not say dot class but that is what you will be executing and there we have it i hope this lecture was helpful and beneficial to you all oh before i forget this bytecode is considered the assembly language for java so uh, this may be a bit difficult if you are unfamiliar with assembly language but assembly language is an extremely simplistic language that informs the processor of the steps necessary for execution in a stepwise fashion java has its own assembly language but it is not called assembly language it is called byte code <coughs> so think of this as the assembly language for java it is a specialized form of assembly language just for java so you will not see it in assembly language tutorials unless it is a tutorial for bytecode that is a different story and that is it with regards to this lecture i hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all enjoy the rest of your day everyone be safe, take care, and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Fil alameen, innaka hamidun majid.